What's up watch enthusiasts, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I uh, ordered something online, I saw it on an infomercial, just received it, so I'm gonna unbox this thing. It comes from Idea Village, apparently. Um, you may have seen the late night infomercials about the American Aviator watch, a commemorative watch, um, kind of commemorating the World War II, the Aviator pilot watches. And this is the box it comes in. So this is the cool collector case that it comes in. And it's cardboard and this thing up here is just a glued in placard. Doesn't open or anything. And then inside, uh, here are all the goodies. Now the first thing I wanna say is, if you've seen the infomercials, you know that Rick Harrison of the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas and, and Star of Pawn Stars is the one shilling for this watch. It's only 40 bucks, so keep that in mind. But in the commercial, he's wearing it on his wrist. So I want to know, I want to know as the panda, what watch is so great that a millionaire like Rick Harrison, who can wear uh, a Patek or a Vacheron or any watch he wants, puts on an American Aviator watch. Because gosh, he sold me. I would never sell out, by the way. Never sell out. The Panda is not for sale. I would never pitch a product that I don't believe in, um, no matter how much money you, owed, you, you, you offered me. So you can offer as much money as you want at PeterVonPanda at gmail.com and make your offer, send cash, wire the money, and oh, I'm gonna turn it down. I'm just, I'm just kind of like that. So first of all, little envelope here. Uh, you know, what's interesting is based on the tracking, it did come from Vegas, so that's kind of interesting. And, there is kind of just like cheap paper. American Aviator three hand analog movement. And there is your instructions. Battery replacement, quartz movement, obviously. And here's your certificate of authenticity, which is kind of like a large business card. Um, and oh, look at that. I'm number 36,798. So only 40,000 of these things have been sold. Very collectible, very rare. All right, now in the box here we have ta -da -da, the watch itself. It looks like, and again, some more lining just kind of, oh, just kind of laid in there. What is that? That's not a P51 Mustang. What? What is that? Uh, can anyone tell me what airplane that is? I uh, probably should know, but I don't. Anyway, so here, there's a better picture. Uh, black and white photo emblazoned on the box. American Aviator, 1945, and kind of comes in a. A little cheap watch box. Ooh, foam. <gasps> there it is. Oh man. Uh, so nylon strap, not NATO style, just standard watch strap. And there's the uh, watch itself. Looks like a kind of black ion plated. And we'll take a closer look. So let's start at the very beginning. Stainless steel buckle on here. Pretty straightforward. Looks like the little winged logo that they push is on there. A um, couple of retaining loops. You know, what's interesting here is this kind of olive drab, pretty shiny, kind of like a backpack strap, uh, cordura, some sort of nylon. And, you know, it's pretty well made. I've shown you some really cheap watches that have had worse detail in the strap. Top and bottom, little tiny holes, no grommets or anything to uh, keep the holes from fraying. They're just kind of punched through, as you can see there. And on the back side, punched through the little leather backing. Um, but, you know, everything's lined up pretty well. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. And then on the back here, uh, it says American Aviator, embossed on the leather, I'm assuming. It kind of looks like a leather, but I doesn't say genuine leather and usually when it is you advertise that so kind of this uh, skin toned colored pleather backing so it should be actually pretty comfortable you don't have that rocking yet and right there the all-american made in China you know what a lot of people a lot of people kind of complain about that what it's supposed to honor Americans it was made in China you know what dude where it's made doesn't really matter I mean I get it if you want to make it in America but it doesn't really have anything to do with anything um, there is the little tiny plastic tab in here, keeping the watch from running. 
So we'll see if we can get that out. And then see the watch in all of its ticking glory. Man. That was some trouble. The tab isn't very long. Ah, sorry that you had to muscle through that. So I got it out. Um, there is pretty nice knurling on the crown itself. Kind of like the, the butt end of a mag light or something like that. You know, kind of crosshatch knurling there, so that's pretty good. Push it in, I set the time, and now it's off ticking. So the first thing I can tell you is the case is actually pretty large. Is there a crystal protector on there? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't come with a lot of specs written on the thing. So first of all, the case, as I said, is fairly large. It's reading to me about 44 millimeters. And so, you know, a pretty good sized watch. Uh, just on that alone here. The, the bands, because it's both that nylon and that pleather, are, 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 are reasonably stiff, but they're not overly stiff. I've, I've had full leather bands that are stiffer, and so I've got plenty of extra uh, band here for my 7.5 inch wrist, and it goes on pretty comfortably, fits pretty good. Uh, there's a little daylight underneath the lugs. The lugs are actually, they kind of stick out in the ends a little bit more straight or or in line with the case than I kind of would have thought it you know the the lugs usually to me are supposed to give the band a head start down your wrist and maybe probably my critique there would be they should drop down a little further but you know it, you don't feel it doesn't feel crazy uncomfortable but that's what it looks like a 44 millimeter uh, watch on my wrist is a pretty pretty good size for me. It's kind of right in the sweet spot of being comfortable but not being too small and not being too big. I like wearing 44 millimeters. So anyway, take that for what it's worth. But a decent looking watch. And and given that it was a low price point with kind of a, a well-known celebrity, I thought the watch would actually be lower quality. For 40 bucks, I don't expect a lot in, in terms of watch quality. And so this one seems it's just your standard quartz three-hand movement, ticking second hand. The, the dial itself does harken to the old aviator watches. Uh, the minutes are marked here in Arabic numerals. Uh, inner chapter ring with a um, the hours marked there because there's no markings on the outside. Oftentimes for, you know, kind of the military nostalgia, they will have a chapter ring that shows it in the 24 hours but this doesn't and that inner ring is red so um, and it's all just painted on the dial so everything from the American Aviator logo name and, and all the chapter rings and hour markers are painted on that dial it's flat there's no angle to the inner bezel um, the crystal kind of sits up a little bit from the case um, glass maybe hardened mineral like I said it's hard to find a spec sheet on this but it's not sapphire, definitely not. Um, and so, you know, the color is, is a little hard to describe. It's not quite olive drab um, on the hour markers. It's, it's a little more like split pea with cream. It's, it's lighter, it's not as dark as the band itself. Uh, and, and, I, and I can understand that because the dial itself is kind of like a flat charcoal. Like, I mean, it's a flat black, but it's kind of like a dark graphite charcoal color. You know, it kind of blends in with the case color. Um, but I would expect these to usually match the band a little more, but I understand why they didn't because it would be really hard to see a really dark olive drab on this color face. The hands here look like they have some loom. I don't know if the second hand will. We'll check that out. Uh, but the loom or the, the, the paint that they use on the, the hands there, kind of those broad leaf shaped hands, are brighter than everything else. They look like an eggshell white. So does that make sense? It might be a little hard because of the lighting here and kind of the re reflection. So obviously no anti-reflective coating on it. Um, but they are effectively white. So there is a pretty big contrast here between the white on the hands, the red on that inner chapter ring, and kind of that split P with cream colored, uh, you know, minute markers. A really big pip right up there. Okay. Um, again, I don't know, ion plated case. 
It's definitely black. It's definitely a brushed finish. Uh, it seems pretty nice. There's no real waves in the metal. So it doesn't seem like a real cheap casting. I'm impressed with that. You know, there's nothing special about it. You would expect just a decent watch. You know, I mean, t let's be honest. At 40 bucks, you can't expect the world. And then on the back here, still got the protective cover on it. We'll get that off. Um, kind of a pressed in stainless steel backing to it, I, 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 I presume. Doesn't look like it unscrews, although there are the little notches like you could put the tool in it, but they're so, they're so subtle. I don't know that anything would fit in there to get any, to grab anything. So I think they're more aesthetic for, than anything else. You'd still have to put a, like a blade under there, there and pry it up. But it looks like, oh, kind of like a sandblasted or laser etched uh, design on the back here, the, the flag, the number, which does match my certificate of authenticity. 36798, so that's good. Um, the wing logo and, you know, three atmospheres water resistant from Idea Village, 1945. I'm not really sure what that, what the 45 symbolizes there or, or commemorates, but um, so the issue is, you know, no screw down crown or anything. So three atmospheres is, is splash resistant, not water resistant. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so, you know, it is what it is for 40 bucks, 39.95 plus shipping. So you're going to be a little over 40. Um, you know, it, if you're looking for a watch in the $40 price point, you like a little bit more of that outdoor military type of style. No, well, why not get it? You know, Rick Harrison said he wears it. I'm sure all the time. So... You know, I'm not, I'm not disappointed at $40. It is kind of gimmicky, no doubt, right? I mean, all this stuff, which is just packaging, is not really nice packaging, and it's kind of gimmicky. I mean, I would think maybe the gimmick would work a little bit better if they were said that, you know, part of the money goes to Wounded Warriors or something like that. Um, you know, at 40 bucks, there's just not a lot of margin, in my opinion. Yeah, there probably is a lot of margin, but you, you, know, you got to make it up on volume. Uh, so, do I have any doubts that Rick Harrison loves this watch that he has, maybe serial number one, and wears it all the time? Oh, hell no, he does not. Because I'm not going to. For me, I just wanted to find out what it was like because there's so little information on it. But it's not a bad watch. If you have a $40 budget, if this thing runs for a few years, good on you, man. Peter Von Panda. For the American Aviator watch, I think you can get it at AmericanAviator.com, bust out your credit card, or just stay up until the wee hours of the morning and watch the infomercial. Out!